this must be the biggest international package I've ever received. I'll open the giant package first, inside which there are two more packages. First up, I see a BMA, that's the Bowens Mount Adapter. It's like a universal adapter for some accessories like a softbox. You can quickly clip on something to your light using this tool. We'll check it out later. Second box, that's one of the two lights. It's the 130 BNA. It's a 130 watt bicolored light. My first pro grade light. Can't believe this. I'll keep it to a side because there is more stuff in there. Let's open this package. All right, more accessories. Okay, there's a V-mount adapter for the batteries, I believe. Yep, these lights can be powered with batteries too. So this is like a handle for them. I'll mostly be using them on wall power because batteries die pretty fast. There's some kind of a carry pouch too. And no, Bruh. that's not how you use it. And there's the V-mount adapter for those two batteries. You just plug them in there and connect this to the handle we saw earlier. That handle can then plug into the light and power it. And the final package is the 60 BNA, a slight lower powered 70 watt approximate light. This is also a bicolor as you can see but it's a lower wattage one so it's like a small boy. So big boy and small boy we have two things to check out. They should be identical except for the brightness output but we'll take a look. We do have another package though so let's take a look inside as well. I assume these are more accessories. Yes they are. We have two packages. Oh it's an intensifier with barn doors. That's cool. It'll help you direct the light better. Those doors will help you narrow the light so it doesn't spill outside and this thingy with the lens can help you narrow the beam down if you want that. You can move this lens forward or backwards using that dial and it'll increase or decrease the beam length. And the barn doors simply clip on just like that. Really easy to set up. And yes, this uses the bow and mounts adapter as well. Let's unbox the small boy first, 60 BNA. You can see it has an anglerfish logo. That's the name of this light series. Inside the box, okay, we're greeted with a pretty good looking carry pouch, black and red. MKBHD would approve. Okay, we have another bow and mounts adapter and a power cord. Okay, seems like a U UK standard plug. I guess I'll need an adapter for that. That's fine. I have a Velcro tie and a sticker. What's underneath this? All right, we have some warranty stuff and a free gift. What is this? Oh, a shower cap for my cat. How nice. And there's the power brick with a strong cable to hang it to something. It outputs 90 watt maximum, which should be fine for this light. And behind this tiny door here, there you go. That's the light. It's much lighter and compact, but very well built. The sides are made from good quality plastic and the top panel is metal. And you can see it has a cooling fan underneath with a heat sink. Obviously, these lights get really bright. So having a proper cooling mechanism is important. It has a USB power delivery as well, up to 100 watts. That's dope. And that's where you plug in the cable to power this thing and next to this we have oh okay a reflector of sorts so that'll help intensify the beam a lot more i don't personally like these things they make the light look a bit too harsh in my opinion but you know it's it's good that we have it in the bag i observed that the power cords have a lock thingy on them so when you connect them it locks in place and doesn't really budge if you have to disconnect you have to push it back and only then it'll come apart so that's pretty cool on a production set no one can accidentally trip on these and disconnect your power and since the light already has a bow and mounts adapter, attaching any accessory is super simple. You just line them up and click. There you go, that's it. And if you have to unhook it, you just pull back this red liver thingy that releases the lock and it comes apart. Bow and mount is pretty standard. You will find it in a lot of accessories and it's for good reason. It's easy to attach and detach it. And that's how this reflective cone thingy looks if you put it on there. I'm not gonna be using it as much as I mentioned, but yeah, just wanted to show you that. I just mounted this on a light stand that I have. Super simple process. It just screws in place. I connected that to power and uh, there it is. It has a standby screen. And and as soon as you hit the power button, it switches on. You can use this dial to switch between menus and you can press and hold it to navigate back and forth. They also have an app for your phone which you can download by scanning that QR code in the manual. Looks like there's a firmware update too. Welcome to the future where your lights have software updates. You can obviously control the brightness and stuff from your phone using Bluetooth and it works really well. That's how I'll be controlling them when they are far away like that. But if you're nearby the controls, you can use the dials in the back. You can press the set button to change change the temperatures, quickly jump between a few presets and you can turn the dial to granually adjust the color temperature. And you can press and hold that dial to go back to the previous menu. So pressing it is okay, pressing and holding is like going back. Not super intuitive but it's fine. It has a bunch of effects as well. I never like those effects, I just use it as a static light source. So yeah, I'm not gonna be using this after this video. I'll just be using it like that in a standard mode. You can change the speed and temperature range of these effects 
And you know what, even though these effects are kind of gimmicky, I would rather have them and not use them as much, instead of not having them and wanting to use them once in a while. It's always good to have extra features that you don't always use, right? What's the harm? This thing has a very wide range of yellow and white light and you can switch between that easily. And here you can see that intensifier in action. You can increase or decrease the spread of that light. It's pretty dope, you know, it works well. And the fans, by the way, are fairly silent. I kept them running for about a couple of minutes, maybe 15-20 minutes, and I can't really hear anything. Let's also unbox the big boy and compare them side by side. There's the same familiar bag again. So far, pretty much same. Okay, now there's a difference. Instead of a Boeing's mount adapter, you get a larger power brick. Because this does require more power, right? Situation underneath seems pretty same. There is this extra tool as well included with the previous light. I forgot to use it. And there's a similar reflector thingy. I'm not going to use that. And there is the light. Nice. It's about the same size as the 60 watt one. Pretty much the same design. Only thing I'm noticing different is the power delivery. You can see that the Type-C port can output 140 watts as opposed to the 100 watts on the 60 watt model. Just something to note, not that important. But yeah, the build quality and everything virtually feels identical in the hand. It's about the brightness output after all. I'll use this extra adapter to fasten it in place. And using this adapter, I can screw it onto a light stand like so. That way it remains sturdier. And fine, you know what, let me put that reflector thingy just to show how it looks like. Alright, I'll plug it in and turn it on. Whoa, that is bright. Let me adjust my camera. Really, it's only a 10% brightness. It's already so blindingly bright. Yeah, this is definitely key light material. Like the big boy is for sure gonna be my key light. But I can't use it as it is. I'll have to use some kind of a diffusion. So I'll order a softbox for this. I would have included the softbox in this video, but it takes a long time to deliver for some reason. So I'm just showing you the product for now. But yeah, this key light that I'm using will be replaced soon with this thing. And if I install the beam intensifier on this, you can see it works the same way. The beam intensifiers are the same size for both the lights. I did notice that the heat sink is a little bit better on the 130 watt model. It has more fins and that makes sense because the higher wattage model will produce more heat. So these extra fins will help it dissipate that heat faster. Let's quickly check out this battery accessory as well. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be using it on battery power, but this is how you do it. You attach two of these batteries there and connect this to the main handle. It takes a little bit of brute force. It's not that smooth to do. Just push it in place. That's what she said. But once it fits together, yeah, it's pretty sturdy and you can then connect that cable to a light. You can mount the light in any way you wish, maybe like this, you know, using a thread so it holds on steadily. And there you go. Now you created some kind of a chicken-like contraption. It's fine if you want to keep that light somewhere with battery power where there is no power outlet, but it can't power that light at max brightness for a long time. And those batteries don't charge super fast either. It's like one hour of charge for one hour of juice maximum. So I don't like carrying carrying them around. Let's test this adapter thingy. This Bowen's mount adapter fits on your light super easily and it has that extra circular attachment so you can use a softbox or something on top. And you can see it's strong enough to hold the light on its own and it's really easy to detach it as well. This is the mark of a pro grade gear, like something that's easy to work with without much hassle. That's what separates budget stuff from flagship gear. It's quality and ease of use, not necessarily features. Even a budget light like the $50 one I'm using right now does the job. But this makes it so much easier for you to do your day-to-day -day work. It just blends in the background, you don't have to think about it. And you can use these lights in a number of ways. Pass them through a screen to mimic sunlight, which is one of my favorite tricks to do. You can even pass them through a window to mimic that same light. Hollywood movies use this effect all the time. That's right, it's not real light you see in those movies. Nothing is real and life is a lie, my friend. I used these for quite a while and I didn't notice any issues. The top side did get hot because that's where the heat comes out. But the lights continued to remain operational, so I have no issues. At least none that I noticed so far. This isn't exactly a long-term review because gear like this takes some time to get used to. So maybe I'll make an update in about a month if you still have questions. But for now, this is what I had. That was a brief look at the Anglerfish SL1 60BNA and 130BNA.